Hi everyone, it's me. So today I wanted to share with you guys some of the most common Canadian phrases. So I am here in beautiful Ontario, Canada. The bugs are screaming. Um, summers in Canada are usually punctuated by a lot of heat, some thunderstorms, and screaming insects. So get ready. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Alana and I'm a Canadian, but I've lived in England for the last four plus years. Now, while I don't have an English accent and I probably never will, I have noticed that my voice, the way that I say things, um, all that kind of stuff is different since living in England. However, when I have alcohol, I sound far more Canadian than I do without. So in the name of science and for the sake of this video, I got some alcohol and I am ready. <laughs> so if you don't mind, I have a rosé cider from Brickworks Cider House, which is from Ontario. Their ciders are fabulous. This is not sponsored because I'm nobody. <laughs> but if you don't mind, I'm going to have some of this and then we're going to come back and I'm going to share 15 typical Canadian phrases with a more Canadian accent for, I don't know, those moving to Canada, those interested in living in Canada. Maybe for those of you who have somehow found this video, you don't know how you got here, but you're here. Okay, are you guys ready? Yay! I just realized my glasses are disgusting. <laughs> They're so dirty and my shirt is not an appropriate material to wipe them with. So just, just, I'm gonna have to look past all the fingerprints. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Okay, I'm feeling a little bit sick, so without further ado, let's go. So these are typical Canadian phrases, um, number one being, hey there bud, I love calling people bud, you will hear it fairly common, uh, fairly commonly in Canada. Of course Canada is a very big country, these are stereotypical things, but they're also things that I specifically have heard or have said, so it's based on my opinion only, um, that shouldn't surprise you. Anyway, this is not the time for a TED talk. Hey there, bud, is very common. I love to say it. You can call anybody bud, really. Uh, maybe not in a formal business setting, but you could say it to literally anybody. Somebody holds the door open for you at Tim Hortons and you could say, hey, thanks, bud. Bud is just a really lovely thing to say and to call people. Of course, it could be said in like a sarcastic, kind of like aggressive way. In a similar way, I know a lot of people that watch these videos are British. Hello? What are you doing here? I'm just kidding. Thanks for being here. A similar way for the British would be to say mate. So mate would be a affectionate word for somebody, but it could also be said in a sarcastic, sort of aggressive way. For Canadians, we say bud. The bugs today, my guys, are just screaming. I'm so sorry. So hey there, bud. Hey there, bud. Hey there, bud. Uh, it's very really common here. So you can either practice saying that, maybe sprinkle it into your own vocabulary. I don't know. It's fabulous. Number two, another common Canadian phrase is for sure. Now, you don't say for sure because that is not fun at all. Instead, you say for sure. Um, why? Only God knows, and I don't even think he's quite sure. So for sure can be said in literally any type of sentence, it doesn't matter. You're agreeing with somebody, so maybe they say, um, it's gonna be way too hot this weekend, and you go, that's for sure. Or another quite Canadian way of using that is saying it, saying something yourself and then adding for sure on the end to sort of agree with yourself. It's kind of a funny loop. But maybe you say something like, it's going to be 35 degrees out all weekend, so I'm going to be in the pool, that's for sure. Or, 
What is another sentence? <laughs> another heat related one. It's been very hot this summer so all I can think of are heat related sentences but maybe you say it's gonna be 40 degrees today. I'm, I'm so glad we've got air conditioning that's for sure. So for sure is a way to agree with somebody or to agree with yourself but you tend to say it for sure more than for sure. I don't know why but it's really fun to say that's for sure. Number three, a common Canadian phrase is, oh yeah, no. <laughs> I know this one is weird and it's kind of hard to understand. And I bet you there's Canadians watching that don't even realize that we say this, but we do say it, we will say, oh yeah, no. And you think, okay, does that mean yes or does that mean no? And to make it more confusing, you could also add, for sure on at the end of it. So maybe your friend says with this pandemic going on and they're saying, oh, I'm definitely not gonna be going to the bar anytime soon. And you say, oh yeah, no, for sure. So you're agreeing with what they're saying. Um, you could just say, oh yeah, no. Um, it kind of ends up being almost like one word, like you say it quite sort of smooshed together just to make things confusing. Maybe somebody says, um, it's gonna be 40 degrees today, I'm not going outside, and you say, oh yeah, no, for sure. Cause you're just sort of like agreeing. <sniffs> Hair's going in my mouth, sorry. What was I talking about? Another Canadian phrase that's quite similar is saying, yeah, no, you know. Um, again, you can tack it on to the end of most sentences, like for sure. Um, so maybe you're, you're saying, something to somebody god thinking of these sentences is the hardest part um you say i really need to go shopping but i just hate waiting in those lines you know you say yeah those lineups outside i know they're for the best but they are pretty annoying you know so you know again can be added on to most sentences just like for sure it's another sort of confirmation phrase that you can say about pretty much anything. Just go ahead and add, you know, onto any sentence. It usually will work. Try that one at home, kids. <sighs> anyway, number five, a common Canadian phrase, of course, has to be about Tim Hortons. In my neck of the woods, we call it Timmy's. I know other places of Canada love to tell me they don't call it Timmy's. That's fine. You're wrong, obviously, but let's not start a fight here. So maybe somebody is going to do a Timmy's run at work. Um, all the places that I've worked at in Canada that have been more of like an office sort of environment, there will always be somebody will do a Timmy's run in the morning typically. So you give them your coffee order and they'll go out and get it and bring it back to the office. So maybe you say something like, can you get me um, a large double-double and maybe actually throw in a pack of 10 Timbits please. So a couple things in there, a double-double is a coffee with two creams and two sugars. So a double-double is pretty standard across Canada, I would say. And then of course, Timbits are really popular from Tim Hortons. They're little tiny bite-sized donuts. You can get them in a pack of like 10 or 20. So a pack of Timbits is lovely. And then of course, you always say please because Canadians are very polite and we feel a lot of shame and we wanna make sure we say please at every opportunity. So if you find yourself working in Canada and someone's doing a Timmy's run, maybe ask for a double-double, maybe get some Timbits, but always make sure you say please. The sixth common Canadian phrase, of course, is sorry. We like to say it, rather than sorry, we like to say a little bit of a sorry um, not everybody, of course. This is just my opinion. It's not. This isn't the CBC. The CBC? Why does that not sound right? CBC is right. It's not the BBC. It's not the CBC. This is YouTube. Okay, so all I'm saying is a lot of people say sorry here in Canada. We typically will say a bit more sorry. You can also say sorry to things that aren't alive. 
I've said it to mannequins I've bumped into, um, door frames that I've run into, cabinets, dressers, tables, doors. You just say sorry almost automatically. Again, Canadians are very polite and we're filled with a lot of shame. Sorry, again. So just keep in mind, if you are coming to live in Canada or visit Canada, we love to say sorry. Funny enough, I actually know this from another video I did on Patreon. Side note, if you wanna watch more content, please join my Patreon. It's very, very helpful, okay? But anyway, I did a video on Patreon and I actually researched that Canada has an apology act where it's something along the lines of if you say sorry, it cannot be used against you in terms of showing your guilt because Canadians say sorry so much and so frequently that they've made this this legal law to show that just because you say sorry does not mean that you are guilty. You are just Canadian. <laughs> which is fascinating. Anyway, cheers to that. I hope you guys are having a lovely day. I am. So I think we're on number seven, which is about loonies and toonies and a 2-4. So you might hear somebody say, you know, I've got some loonies and toonies, but it's not going to be enough for a 2 -fer. Now they might say 2 fur or 2 four, depending on where you are in Canada. Loonies and toonies mean our currency. So loonies being $1 coins and toonies being $2 coins and a 2-4 is a box of 24 beers. So you might have some loonies and toonies but it's not going to be enough for a 2-4. Now loonies have a loon on them so they just affectionately have been called loonies rather than I don't know oneies maybe. So you got loonies and then our toonies are called toonies because they're two dollars. So our one dollar and two dollar currency is coin based which means your wallet is always heavy and then of course a two four or a two fur depending on how people say it is a case of 24 beers. Okay just something to keep in mind and maybe someday in your life you might need that information but probably not. Number eight is about currency as well. You may hear somebody say that they need to get cash out at an ATM. So Canadians will refer to money as cash, obviously, and an ATM is a automatic teller machine. In the UK, you guys usually call them cash points. We call them ATMs. Cash point didn't sound right to me either, but I know it is right. God, it's so hot out. <laughs> So it's very common to hear a Canadian say they need to get cash out at an ATM. It just means they need to get money out of a cash point. Okay? Make sure to use an ATM that doesn't charge a fee because that's really annoying. And there are some. So you want to find a free ATM, not an ATM that charges you a fee to take out your own money. That is a ripoff. All right? You heard it here first. Don't do it. Okay? Just keep looking for a different one. Now number nine as a typical Canadian phrase, if we don't say cash and we don't say money and we don't say dollars, guess what? Oh, my face is itchy. Canadians will informally refer to money as bucks. Does that have something to do with deer? I doubt it. <laughs> we Canadians tend to hunt deer, but I don't think that is a thing that is connected. So maybe you're shopping with a friend and they say, wow, this gadget is only eight bucks and you say no kidding well that's a great deal and everybody high fives <laughs> but not anymore because it's not good to high five people in a pandemic so if you want to refer to something informally instead of saying dollars you can say bucks in the uk i know people tend to say quid instead of pounds so something is 10 pounds or maybe it's f four quid you know, something like that. Here in Canada, something could be $10, but something else could be four bucks. And usually we'll say bucks for smaller amounts rather than saying larger increments, okay? <sighs> All right, moving on. Number 10, a common Canadian uh, word slash phrase 
is dude. Now, I remember when I first moved to England, I realized how much I said dude and it was embarrassing <laughs> because ain't nobody in the UK saying dude. Sorry guys, it doesn't happen. But in Canada, for whatever reason, I found that dude as just, you know, a term of endearment for somebody was quite common, maybe also because of the age that I was. But I find that I do not say dude anymore, but you may still hear it here in Canada from our younger Canadians. Okay, but in places like the UK, uh, when I moved over, nobody was saying dude. So I cut that one out of my vocabulary very quickly. But in sentences like, hey dude, or that's so cool dude, or what's up dude, like all that kind of stuff. What's up? That's another one I should have added. I'm adding it right now. What's up? <laughs> What's up is a fairly common Canadian phrase. You definitely don't hear that in the UK and I kind of forgot about it. But yeah, what's up dude would be perfectly acceptable. You're kind of, what's up is sort of like asking how they are, what are they doing. It's kind of an open-ended question. You can answer it however you feel that you should. And then dude is kind of tacked on in the end. It's just a, a term of endearment. So what's up dude? Not much. What's up with you? I don't know. You can say whatever you want, really. Okay, let's move on. Number 11, as a common Canadian phrase, incorporates our horrifically cold winters. So you may hear somebody say something like, Oh man, it's minus 20 out. I need to get my toque before we go tobogganing. So a toque is a fairly... I think it's fairly... What's the word I'm thinking of? It's fairly unique to Canada. A toque is typically like a knitted hat or like a beanie, like some sort of hat. A lot of people will call different things toques, but it's really the thing that you put on your head, okay? And tobogganing is that thing where you sit on a sled and you go down a hill. I'm pretty sure uh, most Brits typically say sledding or sledging. Who cares? This is about Canada. Canada, we typically will say tobogganing. We're gonna go tobogganing, but first, I need my toque. So please make sure you wear a toque. It's very cold here in the winter. Even for Southern Ontario, um, I've seen with the wind chill, like minus 40. Schools typically only close at minus 40. Um, up until that point, you have to go to school and it sucks. That's a story for another time. Anyway, toque and tobogganing are very common Canadian words that you will hear in the winter time. So get ready. If you're new to Canada, I hope you have a lovely winter. I don't miss them at all. No, I don't like Canadian winters. No. <laughs> Number 12, a common Canadian phrase. You might hear somebody refer to the boonies. Now, what is the boonies? That's a great question. For me, my parents live out in the boonies. Now, the boonies is kind of country. Um, it's kind of means like middle of nowhere. The boonies is just kind of like out away from town, away from any particular city. So if somebody lives out in the boonies, it means more that they live in the country or the countryside. Now, my parents by true definition don't actually live in the boonies but because i'm so used to living like in a town m like more of an actual city town area when my parents moved out here i always used to say they live out in the boonies because it's more rural than what i've ever been used to but technically it's not true it's a lie don't tell anybody i told you that that's between you and me but the boonies does mean out in the country so you might have a friend that says hey um, do you want to come hang out at my house? I'm out in the boonies though. I think a bug just flew into my face. Did you see that? Anyway, the boonies is a typical Canadian phrase, at least here in Ontario, maybe not so much in the other provinces, but definitely here you might find that your friend or your co-worker or whoever lives out in the boonies. So don't expect high-speed internet. <laughs> Now, our 13th Canadian phrase, or a typical Canadian sentence, whatever, is if someone says, you know, my favorite pop, oh man, it's gotta be A&W root beer. So pop is what Canadians typically refer to as soda from the US maybe, or I know some Brits call them fizzy drinks, which is very cute, but we call them pop. 
So maybe their favorite pop is A&W Root Beer, which is a very popular flavor here in Canada. Not so much other places, but definitely here. Now because I have gotten old at some point, my favorite pop is Diet Pepsi, uh, Diet Coke, or Diet Dr. Pepper. They're my personal favorites. They're fabulous. I gotta do diet because full fat just makes me feel sick. <laughs> but either way, you will typically hear Canadians refer to that stuff as pop rather than soda, rather than a fizzy drink or a soft drink. I know the UK says that as well. It's typically here in Canada, it is just pop. And a and root beer is pretty popular. So if you haven't tried it before, go ahead and try it. You only live once, you know? You might as well try it. It's pretty good. Number 14 refers to food here in Canada. You might hear Canadians say, what do you want to do for dinner? Do you want some KD or should we just get Mickey D's? KD is craft dinner here in Canada. It is a very popular, very gross, processed cheese macaroni. Um, it's a staple when you're in college. My God, I'd eat it out of the pot. Don't tell anybody I told you that. But that is what KD is. It's pretty disgusting, but sometimes you just need it. You know what I'm saying? Mickey D's, of course, would be McDonald's. McDonald's here in Ontario has a lot of different names. Most of them I can't say on camera because they... I don't want to get demonetized, to be honest. <laughs> but we can say Mickey D's for McDonald's uh, and KD for Kraft Dinner. Let's just say you're not in the best of spirits if somebody says that to you you might be a bit sad because Katie and Mickey D's is kind of like sad food or drunk food. Maybe I should get Mickey D's. Do you know how long it's been since I've had Mickey D's? It feels like years. Now finally, our 15 common Canadian phrase. Do you guys know what a Canadian tuxedo is? I kind of hope you don't. It's a little bit embarrassing, but here we go anyway. A Canadian tuxedo is when somebody wears denim on the top and denim on the bottom. That's a Canadian tuxedo. So maybe um, you're out with a group of friends and one of your friends walks up to you and everyone's like, oh man, our boy's got his Canadian tuxedo on. <laughs> it's a little bit silly. It's not super common, but I don't know how many people watching this know of a Canadian tuxedo, so I wanted to include it because it makes me laugh. I'll be honest. I've worn a Canadian tuxedo because I'm Canadian and I think most of us have at some point. Now I just realized those are our 15 typical Canadian phrases. I didn't include A. I just forgot, okay? It's been a minute. But if we want to include A, you certainly can. E-H, obviously we spell it in Canada. Just like for sure and you know, you can add it to the end of many sentences. It's usually when you're looking for confirmation or maybe you're, you're trying to get a, a response from somebody. A lot of people say it without realizing. A lot of Canadians will say, oh, I never say A, I, I think it's stupid. That's cool, pal. To each his own, but I say it a lot, so don't worry about it, okay? All right, cheers now. So those are our 15 plus one common Canadian phrases. I hope you guys learned something new. If you're looking to move to Canada or maybe you are a new immigrant to Canada, I hope this has somehow caused maybe a little bit of enlightenment. Maybe you're just as confused as before. Either way, I hope you guys like this video. For people who are not moving to Canada, hi. Thanks for being here too. I'm not sure what brought you here, but I appreciate it all the same. If you know of any other common Canadian phrases, I'd love to know them. Please leave a comment down below. Otherwise, don't. That's cool too, pal. Just enjoy the video. Thanks for being here. Now that most of the people have left this video and it is only the remaining um, wonderful, loyal subscribers, maybe, perhaps, the people who are still here, hi, thank you so much for being here. Um, I did just want to say thank you to everybody for all their kind messages and comments and emails and even donations and things. Um, my dad died last week. So, um, that was horrific, but I really do appreciate 
so much love and support from such a wonderful community here on the internet. I know the internet is like a lawless, disgusting place, but after seeing so much support from people, it really does feel nice. It's very cozy, it feels wonderful. I just wanna say thank you guys so much. I know a lot of people said that I should just take a month off, maybe even take the whole summer off to just chill, and I really appreciate that. On one hand, um, Adventures in Naps is kind of like my baby and I don't want to give up on it. <laughs> I don't want to take too much of a break. I want to be here. Um, on the crappy financial side, um, Adventures in Naps is the only way that I'm paying my bills during this pandemic and stuff. So AdSense from YouTube, um, people who support me on Patreon and people who support me on Twitch, all of these like Adventures in Naps little areas that is how I'm paying my rent and my bills and my living expenses and my lawyer fees. So thank you so much for that, you guys. I really do appreciate it. But also, I kind of need to keep that going. So I will not be taking the rest of the summer off or any more time off, I don't think, unless something else happens, which fingers crossed. It doesn't, but I do really appreciate people's concern. I'm doing the best that I can right now, and I do wanna still make content. Um, my dad was a really big Adventures in Naps supporter, and he would tell me each week, you know, that he watched my video and it was really funny and stuff, so I don't wanna stop doing this because I know that he would be pissed. <laughs> He'd be pissed if I wasn't doing this anymore. So I'm here. I am still going to be posting. Hopefully I won't be taking any more Tuesdays off, but otherwise I will let you guys know. And I just want to say genuinely, honestly, thank you. If you do want to support me in another way, Patreon is probably the best place to go. I have a link to my Patreon in every video description. I post additional content there, live streams, additional videos every week, all that kind of stuff. So if you do want to support me in other ways, Patreon is the place to do it. If not, that's okay too, pal. Cheers. Thanks for being here. Thank you for being so kind. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. Um, just cheers, man. All right, that's the end of this video officially. Thank you for making it this far. Thank you for being so wonderful and so supportive. I hope you like this video and I will see you real soon, okay? I promise. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, bye!